Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to continue our discussion on uh, filters and mostly we're going to focus on low pass and high pass filters. So let's start with low pass filters and let's start with a very simple circuit. We kind of discussed this circuit actually before. So what makes this circuit a low pass circuit uh, or low pass filter, intuitively speaking, is the fact that we know that a capacitor at low frequencies is going to be an open circuit and therefore there's no current passing through the combination of R and C and the voltage across the resistor stays the same, which means low frequencies are going to pass uh, intact. And for higher frequencies, the impedance of the capacitor is going to uh, decrease and at very high frequencies this is basically a short circuit so you get zero voltage in the output for any input in the in, in any input any kind of input right here and therefore uh, high frequencies wouldn't pass now to write the uh, equations we already know how to do that as well so h of s for this circuit would be the impedance of this capacitor which is 1 over Cs divided by R plus 1 over Cs. This is what uh, uh, commonly called the voltage divider equation. Uh, if you're not comfortable using this equation, you can analyze the circuit and get to the same answer. Now let's simplify this, let's multiply both top and the bottom by Cs and that would be 1 divided by 1 plus Rcs. Now as we mentioned in order to understand how this uh, circuit or filter is going to change a sinusoidal input we replace S with J omega so that makes this equation 1 over 1 plus R C omega J. And then if we look at the magnitude of this function, which is 1 in the numerator and the square root of 1 plus R2 C2 omega 2, this basically tells you how much you're going to have the impedance, I'm sorry, the uh, amplitude of an input uh, cosine omega t uh, change over the, the circuit. And then if you look at the phase of the same function, which is basically phase of the numerator, which is zero minus the phase of the denominator, which would be tangent inverse of Rc omega. And this is going to show you how much the phase of an input, an input cosine omega t is going to be uh, changed by this circuit. So now if you look at this, uh, you can actually uh, realize the same thing that we intuitively discussed. For omega equal to zero, this ratio is one, meaning that the amplitude of a low frequency or DC signal is not going to change at all one times any input is the same input and then uh, the phase would be also zero which means the phase is not going to change and as you go to higher frequencies uh, as the magnitude uh, as the omega increases the value of this magnitude is going to decrease which means less and less of the input is going to pass through the amplitude is decreasing and the phase is going to increase all the way to minus 90 degrees when this is uh, infinity, tangent inverse of infinity. Now if you plot uh, these and specifically let's focus on plotting the magnitude. If you plot the magnitude of Aj omega as a function of frequency or angular frequency you're going to see one 
at zero omega, and then this is going to go down quickly over higher frequencies. And this is basically a characteristic that when you have that, you can call the, your circuit or filter a low pass filter for obvious reasons. Again, low frequencies kind of pass, and then higher frequencies won't. Now, there are these other metrics that are defined for a uh, filter uh, like this, or generally for a lot of other filters, you use the same kind of uh, definition. One is called the 3 dB um, frequency or cutoff frequency. Now, let's see what that is. Uh, omega C is called the cutoff frequency. Cutoff frequency is defined like this. The magnitude of H J omega at omega C is actually equal to the maximum or minimum in this case because this starts at a maximum and goes down it would be the maximum of uh, H J omega divided by square root of 2. Uh, basically, if you look at this, equate that to h maximum divided by a square root of 2 and solve that equation, you're going to calculate omega c. So let's do that. First of all, in order to do that, you have to calculate h max. Now, h max in this case is uh, quite easy to calculate. We are, all, we are already looking at it. The maximum value is actually 1, and that happens at omega equal to 0. Uh, it's easy to see because for any other omega, this value is less than 1, so maximum happens at uh, omega equal to 1. So this basically ratio for this particular situation would be 1 over square root of 2, and I'm going to equate that to this. So 1 over square root of 1 plus R2 C2 omega C to the power of 2. And then now if I solve this equation, I can uh, find what omega C would be for this particular filter. Here, this is not actually that difficult to do. First of all, keep in mind that if you solve this, you may end up getting more than one cutoff frequency. But then uh, one of the two solutions is not acceptable because you can quickly see that one of them is negative. So that wouldn't be acceptable. You can't have a negative uh, angular frequency. Uh, and the positive one is easy to see that this would be happening in a situation where this uh, expression under the square root would be equal to 2, which means this expression has to be 1, and for that to happen, omega c has to be 1 over rc. So from this, you can clearly see that um, omega c is equal to 1 over rc for this particular uh, situation. Now, that means that at this value omega equal to 1 over rc, the magnitude is 1 over square root of 2. Now, one could ask, what's the uh, importance or significance of 1 over square root of 2? Uh, one of the ways to answer or understand that is that uh, when the amplitude of the voltage that is passing through the circuit is 1 over a square root of 2, the power that is passing through the circuit is actually half because we know that volt, uh, basically the relationship between power or the dependency of power on voltage uh, is, uh, is, is a, a second order dependency, meaning that the power is proportional to the voltage to the power of 2. And if the voltage is being 1 over a square root of 2 of the input, and then the power would be 1 over 2 of the input. The power in the output would be 1 over 2 of the power in the input. So basically what I'm saying is that this frequency is the frequency at which, at which half of the power that you apply in the input would show up in the output. So uh, normally half point is uh, something that is uh, used to 
basically make judgments on uh, when you when you want to approximate something like right? right so if uh, something is more than half you approximate that to one and if something is less than half you approximate that to zero so basically calling that cutoff frequency means that if you want to approximate for any frequency beyond that, the power doesn't pass through the filter. For anything before that, uh, half of the power is passing, so you can say the power is passing through the circuit, and therefore cutoff frequency makes sense. The other thing that I want to mention is that omega c being 1 over rc has a, uh, an interesting uh, basically uh, meaning here in this situation too, or the definition. If you take the denominator of this hs and uh, find the poles, uh, s equal to minus 1 over rc is the pole of that transfer function. And that's not a coincidence that the cutoff frequency is actually equal to the magnitude of that pole, which is 1 over rc. So minus 1 over rc, the magnitude of that would be 1 over rc. This is a theme that is going to be uh, repeating in a lot of situations and it's not something it's it would be something that you want to pay attention to that might be useful when you want to quickly calculate uh, cutoff frequencies for your circuits now uh, are, there, are there ways to do this I'm going to show you a different way of doing the same thing and then remove it and hope uh, hopefully go back and show you high pass filters so you can basically make the same kind of filter happen by uh, using an inductor but this time you have to put the inductor in series and the resistor in parallel now I can quickly show you why this also would be a low pass filter. If you write HS for this circuit, that would be R divided by R plus LS. And uh, you can immediately see that HJ omega is equal to R divided by R plus L omega J. And therefore the magnitude of aj omega is r to the power r divided by a square root of r to the power of 2 plus l2 omega 2 and again the same thing is happening here for low omega values this is uh, equal to 1 because this goes away r comes out of the square root and you have a ratio of 1 and for high frequencies the denominator is huge and therefore the ratio is equal to zero so this is going to basically do exactly the same thing now if you want to take that concept that i just explained to you and find out what the cutoff frequency here would be if you set the denominator equal to zero that would be uh, gig, that would give you s equal to minus uh, r over l and uh, therefore the cutoff frequency would be magnitude of that which is r over l one other thing that i want you to notice is that these uh, values 1 over rc and r over l has had other significances in the past for example when we were looking at the step function response of these kind of circuits we saw that these two actually ended up being the time constant for the circuit so these are all connected concepts that uh, end up showing in uh, different ways when we are dealing with different kind of inputs are these the only way that you can do a low pass no you can this these both these cases are called a first order low pass filter. The reason is that the denominator in this case is a first order function of S. You can actually increase the order of S and what that is going to do to for you is that it's going to increase the slope at which the um, frequency is going to roll off. I'm sorry, the magnitude is going to roll off. So the higher the, ma the order of the denominator is, the sharper your filter is going to be. And a lot of times that's actually um, something that you would uh, desire. Ideally, a very good low pass filter should look like this. Basically, H, J, omega, 
the magnitude has to be constant for low frequencies and then right at one cutoff frequency is going to go down to zero and you get nothing passing through the filter. Obviously that's not something that that's not something that you can um, realize. Uh, you can get close to it but you can't really do that. So uh, what we had here was something like this and then sorry something like this and then you can actually make it better and then it goes like this and then you can come close but you can't ever get to a point that you exactly have a 90 degrees angle when the frequency uh, when you reach the cutoff frequency but you can get close to it by increasing the order of the uh, denominator here and get better and better uh, filters by increasing the order. Uh, doing so is going to have uh, some effects on basically how flat the passband region is, but generally speaking you can get really close. Now that I said that I have to also mention one other thing uh, which is the bandwidth. So the bandwidth in this filter is basically the frequencies that pass through and we already mentioned that if you want to appro approximate uh, frequencies starting from zero to cutoff frequency are the frequencies that we assume they're passing through the filter and therefore the bandwidth that sometimes is actually shown as BW is equal to zero to one over RC which actually happens to be the same thing as one over RC so in this case zero to band to cutoff frequency are the frequencies that are passing through the circuit and that's the bandwidth of your filter okay with that i'm going to move forward to proceed to discussing uh, high pass filters which are you're going to see are basically dual of what we discussed so far using the concept of duality between the capacitors and inductors you can quickly realize what I'm about to show you so let's take this circuit and just switch where we place the capacitor and the resistor when you do that if you write HS Again, the voltage divided R divided by R plus 1 over Cs. And that would be R Cs divided by 1 plus R Cs. Then we replace S with J omega. So Hj omega would be R C omega J divided by 1 plus R C omega J. And then if I look at the magnitude of Hj omega, that would be Rc omega in the numerator divided by square root of 1 plus R2C2 omega 2. And the phase would be J omega would be z and uh, now this time the phase of the numerator is actually 90 degrees so that would be 90 degrees minus tangent inverse of r c omega so you can quickly see that the situation is different here this time but for omega equal to zero the denominator becomes one but the numerator is already zero so hj omega actually becomes zero for omega equal to zero or a dc input which means that not, if you have a low frequency or dc signal none of that is going to pass through your circuit again you could have seen that int intuitively because we know that the impedance of a capacitor is 1 over c omega j and then for low frequencies that's infinity basically that's an open circuit 
that shouldn't be a surprise to us. So you have an open circuit between the input and output, so your output is going to be zero. Now, at high frequencies, the situation is different. At high frequencies, this term, the second term under the square root is much larger than one. So you can actually ignore one against that. And at that point, this term comes out of the square root, becomes RC omega, and you have a ratio of one which means at high frequencies, basically all of your signal is going to pass through. Now, again, we could have seen that because the capacitor for high frequencies, we know is going to become a short circuit, and therefore the input and output become the same thing. Um, so if I show or plot H magnitude of HJ omega, versus frequency, I'm going to see exactly the opposite of what I saw there. It's going to go up this time and reach 1 at high frequencies. So low frequencies are not going to pass and high frequencies are going to pass. But the definition of cutoff frequency stays the same. So magnitude of Hj Omega C has to be equal to H max over a square root of 2. Now, H max uh, actually, again, it's easy to see what that is. The maximum value of uh, H A omega is basically 1. We just realized that, right? So I'm going to set that to 1 over square root of 2 and equate that to R C omega divided by square root of omega C, 1 plus R 2 C 2 omega C to the power of 2. And if you solve that, you can see that at omega C equal to 1 over R C, you get it because at that point this goes away, becomes a square root of 2, and that becomes 1, so you get 1 over the square root of 2. So from this, you know omega c is, again, 1 over rc. So the same thing that happened, 1 over rc is happening here. Okay, so now with that, uh, this time for uh, basically band pass, the definition becomes the band pass really is infinity because for any higher frequency, the, 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 um, the frequency is passing. But it, it, instead, you can define something that is finite and that's the uh, basically stop band. Okay, so that would be the band path or the pass band, and it would be a stop band, the frequencies that wouldn't pass. So, stop band, stop band would be equal to also 1 over RC. Um, all the frequencies that wouldn't pass here, 0 to 1 over RC. Uh, same discussion that we had. Notice the difference between the H A omega or H S in both cases, right? And uh, this one, uh, the denominators actually are the same, but this one has a zero in the numerator, whereas that one didn't have a zero, and that's why uh, omega equal to zero ended up giving you a zero, right? Um, same discussion. If you look at the uh, 3 dB bandwidth or omega C. Um, and that ended up being equal to the same thing as the pole uh, for the HS. And again, this, this is not a coincidence. Uh, changing uh, the order of the denominator is going to have the same effect that we discussed before. It's going to make your filter sharper. And ideally, a high-pass filter is going to be a square like that, which you will never get, but you can get closer and closer to it. One last thing that I want to mention, I've already repeated this a uh, co uh, couple of times. Uh, omega C sometimes is also called the 3 dB uh, frequency. Uh, this is a concept uh, when you take 
basically h a omega magnitude of h a j omega and show that in d b so if you do that 20 log of if you want to change this to be 20 log of h a omega as opposed to h a omega this is what is going to happen i'm going to replace that and add 20 log of that in order to turn this into db that's the definition for db right if you do that 20 log of 1 becomes uh, 0 basically and then 20 log of 1 over square root of uh, 2 uh, is very close to minus 3 that's so this is in db so 0 db and then minus 3 db that's why omega the cutoff frequency also is the same as the 3 db frequency or the 3 db bandwidth sometime it's called uh, in this case makes sense and then this is also 3 db bandwidth would be the stop bandwidth would be 3 db uh, with that i'm going to conclude this and move on to the next lecture uh, where we're going to focus on uh, two other kinds of filter that are bandpass and bandreject. Thank you.